With more analysis, we can cross now to Beirut and speak to Jasmine El Gamal, who is a senior, a Syria expert and a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, you worked as an advisor on Syria, Syria policy in the uh, Obama administration. So what's happening right now must look like a serious case of déjà vu for you. Uh, do you expect the Trump administration is ultimately going to prove to have been more assertive on Syria than the Obama administration? It's hard to say at this point. I mean, assertive is really not the best way to look at it, because you could say that Trump was assertive last year um, when he carried out uh, strikes against the Syrian regime for using chemical weapons. So the point here isn't whether or not Trump is going to be more assertive, but whether he's going to be more strategic and more thoughtful and to actually do something in a way that fits part of a broader plan and that makes sense for the region and the country moving forward. And of course, as you were just seeing in the earlier report, in a way that doesn't provoke Russia to the extent that we start another bigger and more dangerous conflict. Yeah, because uh, from here and, and, and actually even from, from across the border or anywhere, deciphering what's really happening in Syria is an incredibly difficult business. It's made more difficult by uh, various alternative narratives, which uh, we read uh, people sympathetic to Assad uh, and to Moscow put forward. Um, so obviously, before deciding to take action, Washington, London and Paris have to be absolutely sure that Assad was indeed behind that attack. Do you think they're going to be able to get the degree of proof they need? Tom, it's hard to say at this point because publicly there's absolutely no evidence as to who carried out the attack. So you have an OPCW mission that's on its way to um, Duma right now to investigate. But that mission is not there to investigate who carried out the attack. That's not part of their mandate. They're there to figure out whether an attack actually happened and what kind of chemicals were used. The disagreement or one of the disagreements between Russia and the U.S. right now in the U.N. Security Council is about this investigative mechanism that would actually be tasked with finding out who did it. So that's on the public front, which is all we know. Um, behind closed doors, we don't know what the intelligence says. So the French president says that they have evidence that Assad carried out the attack. Um, the U.S. administration has not is talking as if it knows that he carried out the attack. So we one can assume that they have some sort of an idea. Um, we know that the president has been meeting almost on a daily basis with his advisors on this issue and that there's another meeting today at around 5 p.m., I believe, Eastern time, um, to continue discussing the options. And so it's really hard to say at this point what kind of evidence they have. But you can tell by the amount of discussions that both are being held within the U.S. government and between the U.S. government and its allies that there is something quite significant there. I'm just curious because uh, I spend a lot of time in Beirut as well and I know people love to talk about politics and uh, theories uh, about what's happening internationally. Is a, it, that's a big part of uh, the national uh, pastime of, of Lebanon. And I'm just wondering whether you're hearing where you are. Any theories being put forward by people you're talking to or anything you're reading in the paper as to a possible third explanation as to what happened there in, in Syria, you know, that it was neither Assad, uh, nor is this as, as Russia, Russia's claiming today, in fact, that this, they have proof that uh, uh, the rescue workers carried out this uh, uh, chemical attack. I'm just wondering whether you're hearing any uh, interesting theories there in, in Lebanon as to just you know, what, what might explain this uh, in, in a different way. Ah, uh, man, I mean, you said it yourself. This place is <laughs> rife with conspiracy theories and, and everybody has an explanation for en en everything. Um, and it's not just this country. I mean, it's, it's the whole region. And, and now it's the U.S. as well. So everybody has some sort of explanation for it. Um, you're hearing everything from, um, uh, you know, the Russians. The Russians did this. Um, the rebels did this. Trump is doing this to distract from the myriad scandals he's facing at home. Um, Trump is doing this because he wants to uh, um, prove his dominance over Russia. I mean, there, there are all kinds of, of, of theories here. I, I don't necessarily think that any of them are helpful. 
Um, I think that people here are, um, you know, they're sort of worried. Um, nobody really knows what's going on, and I think that has people somewhat on edge, because as you know, in Lebanon, um, it always ends up being um, affected by what's happening around it in the region. And so the sense here is that whatever happens in Syria won't necessarily stay in Syria. So people are trying to figure out what is going to affect them and how, and so they're watching events very closely. Okay, as indeed. Uh, we thank you so much for bringing us uh, that and for your analysis, Jasmine El Gamel, there in Beirut.